promise so. Let's just take a moment to get settled in our seats. ready to take a deep breath. This morning, the word is conquer. So as your eyes are closed, take a deep breath in. And as you inhale in, think of the word conquer. And as you slowly exhale, think of a place where you can just conquer. Take another deep breath in, hold it. And as you release it, Think of that word and let that be your word for the week. And as you take another deep breath in, just hold it. Let your mind go to the word conquer. And as you exhale, just think of that one word. Take another deep breath in and go to your space with that word. And as you exhale, Take a moment to reflect on that one word. And as you take this last breath, go to that place. Think of that word. Conquer. And as you you exhale, just stay in that place for a little while longer. Namaste. It's a wonderful inside joke amongst us. Thank you. Love the support of my sisters. So I say to you again, Salbona.
Mount Airy. And to those of you who are online, we also welcome you. We welcome your presence. We welcome your spirit. Thank you for coming to the house through technology. At this time, let us offer up prayer and praise to the Almighty God. Father God, we are grateful for your promise that when two or three are gathered in your name, you are there among us. We thank you for the opportunity to gather in your holy presence once more. Oh God, we ask that you bless our worship service today, that you bless the speaker today. Speak through her. Let your word fall as an anointing upon your people, that we may offer up to you true praise. We pray that you would grant each and every one present with a yearning heart for those that are present here physically and those that are present online and an open ear so that we may thirst for your word and manifest your glory today, God. May you fill us with understanding your will. And after this worship service, we ask that you make instruments of us for your greater purpose. These we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Mount Airy. Come on, bring your hands together. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Bring your hands together.
we're going to take time to worship him because he's God. Is that all right? The song says, you alone deserve the glory. And you alone deserve all of my praise. So we're going to lift our hands in worship. Hallelujah. Come on. You alone deserve the glory. You alone deserve the glory. You alone deserve the honor. You alone deserve the honor. You alone deserve all of my praise. and adore you. Hallelujah. Because no one else deserves the praise. Only you alone deserve my praise. Hallelujah. Come on, my Mary. Let's give it to him. No one else.
take me back to where he brought me from. Hallelujah. I got a testimony. I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to give him honor. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. of our pastor who was on assignment. I'm grateful for this opportunity to come and to share and to stand behind this sacred desk today. And this um, Baptist preacher said, I'll you long. But <laughs> I do believe that there is a word and this is National Women's History Month. And I know others in the sanctuary and maybe even those online. But I'm going to ask that you walk with the sisters today. Because this sermon is dedicated to our scripture will be found in Acts, the 16th chapter. And I will be reading from both the NIV and then later from the message translation. And it's, I'm going to start at the 13th verse down through the 15th verse. And it reads something like this. On to the river where we were expected to find a place of prayer. Sat down. One of them listening was a woman from the city of Cyparia named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God, and the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. And she says, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. I'm going to tag this text for the next few minutes, a place of transformation. A place of transformation. Let us pray. Our wise eternal God, here we are, God, at your divine appointed time. I ask you, O oh God, to do what it is that you do in this moment and allow your word, God, to fall on good ground. God, I, I, I believe that I'm on assignment today to minister to the women. So, God, we thank you because you do all things well and you do all things but fail. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Beloved, <clears throat> this time last year, Dr. Sherwood Pastor and I had an amazing opportunity to join people across the globe in a two-day virtual conversation on women who lead change. 
women from various locations, backgrounds, ages, and religious beliefs came together to discuss gender equity and inclusion. Candace Bimbo, the author of the Red Lip Theology for Church Girls, who considered tithing to the beauty supply store when Sunday morning isn't enough, was one of the conveners in partnership with the Rockefeller Foundation. Candace will be joining us on Saturday. And if you have not registered, please register and bring a friend. Per her website, Candace is a multi-genre theologian who situates her work at the intersections of beauty, faith, feminism, and culture, giving voice to black women's shared experiences of healing and journeying towards wholeness, reimagining how faith can be a tool of liberation and transformation for women and girls, she challenges black women to think critically about how they see God, themselves, and the world. The first day of this conference, Candace set the stage to empower women to share our voices, our stories, and ideas. It was clearly understood at this virtual convening that women have agency. It is also understood that we can glean from women and learn from women in the sacred text. From the lens of Kairos theology, we know that the biblical narratives and lived experiences of women can often lead and point to pain, trauma, injustices, and oppression. There are over 100 learners who logged on to this powerful conference because we as women, we have something to say. Our collective narrative offers healing and transformative change. One of the women shared her story by lifting the notion that women can become disruptors. Our voices and with our sisters and power, we can disrupt and dismantle anything that comes our way, anything that is set in place to hold us back, and anything that keeps us on the margins and the fringe of society. So as we continue to celebrate women during this month and even today, let us recognize all women. We matter. We are important to God. <clears throat> we celebrate our uniqueness. We are beautiful. We are created in the very image of God. And one thing stands out for me that is th throughout the entire biblical narrative, women were then and are now still included in the plan of God. Women were central to both the Old and the New Testament. Interestingly enough, according to the book Bible Women and their words and why they matter, believe this or not, women only speak an average just a little bit over 14,000 words in the Bible. There are 49 named women who speak in Scripture and 95 specific women who speak in scripture as well. 78 of them do so individually, both named and unnamed. And yet while this may seem like a small number in comparison to the men, the words that are captured in the, in the biblical text seem even smaller, but let us not dismiss how these women have shaped the biblical story. Life in biblical times for women were not glamorous. Life was emotionally, spiritually, physically, and sexually treacherous, which makes their accomplishments even more extraordinary. From the first woman who speaks in the Bible, Eve in Genesis, to the last woman who speaks in Acts, which is the fortune-selling 
uh, slave girls, women for centuries, have pushed against the restraints using their God-given gift of free will. Women show up in scripture and in life. And when we show up, we show up as God's agent of grace, change, and healing. We have something to say, and more importantly, we have divine assignments assigned to our hands. This morning is dedicated to every woman under the sound of my voice who ever thought she was not good enough, to those who thought they were not qualified, to those that never been invited to the party, to those that never felt comfortable in the skin that she's in, to those who were told, you're too tall, you're too short, you're too light, you're too dark, you're too thick, you're too thin, for those who have dedicated, to those who have been victimized, beaten, thrown away, and abused to those who were wandering the streets, not knowing where to go or what they would do next, to those who have contemplated suicide when the rainbow was enough. This sermon is dedicated to those who were on the receiving end of a closed fist to those who have sold their bodies, to those who were told they were ugly and no good, to those who've been incarcerated behind bars and even incarcerated in our minds, this sermon is for you. You are on the very mind and the heart of God. Let us stand on our feet today and celebrate every single woman that's in this place and those that are online. Yes, celebrate the women. You are marvelous in the eyes of God. And as my daughter Jocelyn would say, God will spin the block just for you. You are amazing with your sassy and your sexy self. God is affirming you today. God has heard your prayers. God has seen the tears. God has seen all the injustices that is directed towards you. And I am on assignment today to stand here behind this sacred desk to tell you, you are enough. Whether you have natural hair or weaved hair or braided hair or no hair, you are marvelous in the sight of God. <laughs> Through all the trauma and the drama that you have experienced in your life, God is saying today, I got you and I see you. When you think you are all alone, God says, I am there. I am with you because when I look at you, God says, I'm looking at myself. Yeah. Our text is, this morning is in the book of Acts. And this book is written by Luke, the physician. Luke is also the same author of the gospel in which that bears his name. Luke was not one of the 12 disciples, but rather a close companion of Paul. Luke writes in the finest Greek. He is very well educated, and he is very well traveled. He is the only Gentile writer in the Bible. And these writings highlight the establishment of the early church known as the Way. Luke nicely shifts the narrative to include Gentiles, the non-Jews, and how they fit into the plan of salvation. With Luke, women are affirmed, and outsiders become insiders. He starts off by telling the story of the ascension of Jesus. Luke's in, uh, Jesus instructs the disciples, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that the Father had promised. Then Luke further writes about how the Holy Spirit came and filled the believers who were in the upper room. 
and the text tells us there were 120 men and women that were in the upper room and how the Holy Spirit enabled them to speak in other tongues and do great and mighty things on behalf of Jesus. Luke draws a map using geography to teach theology, to show the reader how and where the message of Jesus has been spread that leads outside of Jerusalem. It is Luke that introduces the readers to Paul. And for our lesson for this morning, we are in chapter uh, 16. And I will be meet, reading from the message translation. On the Sabbath, we left the city and went down along the river where we heard there was to be a prayer meeting. We took our, get, th get this in the text. We took our place with the women who had gathered there and talked to them. One woman, Lydia, was from Thyatira and a dealer of expensive textiles known as a God-fearing woman. As she listened in with intensity to what was being said, the master gave her a trusting heart and she believed. After she was baptized along with everyone in her household, she said with a surge of hospitality, if you're confident that I am in this with you and believe in the master, truly come with me and be my guest. We hesitated, but she would not take no for an answer. In this text, we see that Paul and his associates are traveling during Paul's second missionary journey. It was not Paul's plan to go to Macedonia. Earlier in the chapter, we see that Paul had intentions to travel to the province of Asia, but the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Jesus, redirected him through a vision of a man of Macedonia saying, standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. I think this is a joke. I think God often has jokes because as Paul was redirected and saw the man in the vision saying, come over and help us, Paul didn't know that he was going to encounter a group of women. This was a sign to Paul that God had called them to preach there. It was the Sabbath and they were looking for a place to pray, so they went outside the city gates. And as we unpack this text real quick, we learn that in Philippi, which is now modern-day Greece, there were no known synagogues. In cities where there were no known Jewish synagogues, where they did not exist, believers gathered under the sky and near the river, the water, so when Christian other believers um, came, they would know where to find them. In Jewish law, a synagogue could not be established with fewer than 10 men, male men of households to form the congregation. So with this, we can assume that there was not a great Judaism presence there. And these men go down to the river and there they find women that were already gathered to pray. The text says that the women took their, the men took their place among the women. And one of the women in the text, her name is Lydia. Lydia was a Gentile, but yet prayed with Jewish women. She was an entrepreneur. Lydia had it going on. She was a dealer in purple dye and fabric. The most expensive dye and fabric that were made available only to the elite in Lydia's day. It was only like the one percenters of the society that would go and exchange business with her. Scholars believe that her clientele even included high-ranking positions in the Roman Empire. Lydia had no need for material things. She was the head of her household. It is indicated that Lydia owned two houses, one in Thyatira and the second one in Philippi. Lydia had all the resources and the status that she needed in life, and anything that anyone could ever desire, Lydia already had it. 
If I could tell you like I want to tell you, I would tell you this chick wasn't broke, nor was she poor. But even though she had all the material need items that she could ever dream of, that anybody could ever dream of, I believe that there was still something missing in her life. We already know that she was a worshiper of God. We already know she was a praying woman, but she did not know the message of Jesus. And the Bible says, as Paul spoke with the women, that it was the Lord that opened Lydia's heart to receive the good news. For I have surmised that the place of prayer and the place where we receive the word is indeed our place of transformation. According to the online dictionary, human transformation is defined as an internal shift that brings us in alignment with our highest potential. It is at the heart of every major aspect in our lives. It affects how we see the world, how we relate to others, but also how we relate to God. At that very moment, when Lydia received the word, she was transformed into a believer of Jesus. What happens when a praying woman opens her heart to Jesus? What happens when we are, our heart is open to receive a word from the Lord? I believe in all that Lydia possessed there was still a void somewhere in her heart and in her soul that she was searching and she was seeking. Can anyone under the sound of my voice this morning, can you identify with Lydia? You may have all that you need. You may not have a desire for anything else, but there is a still a void in your soul. There is a still a vacant, it's vacant in your heart. This past week, I sat with Lydia. There was something about this text that would not let me go. And I began to ask Lydia some questions that was not only in my mind, but on my heart. The text does not tell us the words that Lydia prayed. There is something about her and her posture of prayer that captured my very soul. Prayer is, prayer with the word is indeed a place of transformation. God told me and instructed me to ask you, where is your place of transformation? Where is the place that you release all that you have been carrying, that you have been trying to manipulate the outcome, <laughs> that you have been doing things, you've been hedging your bets, you are exhausted and you are tired because you have not surrendered whatever those things or that thing is, you have not surrendered it to the Lord. And God is saying today at this moment, meet me in a place of prayer and the word and I will open your heart. You ain't got to worry about nobody else opening your heart. God is saying, I will open your heart to receive. When God opens the heart of a woman, she is forever changed. But notice in the text, when God transformed Lydia, and she and her household were baptized. When God opens the heart of a woman, her household can be changed and transformed. Her children can be changed and transformed. When God opens the heart of a woman, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the things that God has in store for the women that dare to call on his name. Where were you when you received the good news? Where were you when you know that Jesus loved you so much? Where were you 
When you heard the word of God that stopped you in your tracks. Is that the place of your transformation? Because sometimes we seek and we search and we're void and we're empty. God's saying, slow down. Stay still. I ain't going to chase you, but I am wherever that you are. And I will open up your heart and you will receive the word about my son, Jesus Christ. And you will know nobody else to tell you. It don't have to be a hashtag. It don't have to be a sign on the highway that you are unconditionally loved and you are enough. You don't have to put on airs and pretend that you're somebody or something that you're not. God saying, I love you exactly the way that you are. place of transformation. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. A place where we meet God. A place where we gather our sisters and we begin to go down in prayer. Who are you praying with? Who are you praying with? Because the people or the women that you pray with ought to be able to keep your secrets. If you are going to lift up your prayer request to God and you are going to open up your mouth and begin to pray, you need to know that your circle is tight. But I have not lived this long to know that everybody in your circle ain't in your corner. And so you better check the people that you are praying with. You better check the ones that you are going down in prayer that is holding your prayer secret. I'm talking this morning about a place of transformation. Because if you are going to be transformed into the very woman that God has called you to be, you have to do it with integrity and you have to be transparent. You have to say, God, this thing right here is bothering me. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but God, when I get in this space, I need you to put bits in my mouth. I need you to give me the word so I don't just like I don't, I don't, I, I, I just, I just need, I just need you to be with me. God, I need you to show me. God, I need you to talk to me. God, I need you to walk with me. God, I need you. I need you like I've never needed you before. When it feels like my back is up against the wall. God, I need you to be there. So whoever you are going down in prayer with, you've got to be transparent right before God. Because if you are going to be transformed this morning, you can't Set, hide behind no lie. Why? Because God knows about it anyhow. So because he knows about it anyhow, I'm going to put it into the atmosphere and I'm going to tell God exactly what's on my mind and exactly what's on my heart. A place of transformation. God is not looking to change us. He's looking to transform us. Life for women even now is hard and challenging. Life for women can some, I, 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 I felt this this morning when I got up. Somebody under the sound of my voice, here or online, you feel lonely. You feel isolated. You feel that no one can identify or relate to you. You feel embarrassed about some of the things that you're going through or some of the things that you're going through even right now. Don't ever be embarrassed or ashamed about what you have experienced or what you're going through because at the end of the day, it all gives God glory. God will take the scraps of your life to build the kingdom and to turn back and get another woman and say, if I got through this, 
you can get through this. And I'm going to pray your way through this, and I'm going to walk with you in there because I've been there, and God made a way out of no way when it felt like I was all alone, when I was just grieving, when I was crying, when I didn't have money to pay my bills, when I was told I didn't count. God says, yes, you do count because I made you and I created you. So I believe today as women, we have a responsibility to go and help our sisters. We have a responsibility to say, yep, I serve the same God as you. And I did not know what else to do, but I fell on my knees. Ever, even if it was at 12 midnight, I fell on my knees. And I began to call out to God because that was my place of transformation. Bible lets us know that God moved on the heart of Lydia and gave her a ministry of hospitality. That even when the brothers went to jail, the first place that they went to when they were released was Lydia's house. Lydia only speaks 17 words in the text, but don't dismiss that because she was the first convert on European soil. Her house was the ch first church house that Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke, they were missionaries, they were going around planting churches, they were going around, but it was the resources of Lydia that helped support the work of the ministry outside of Jerusalem. What am I saying? You may not have two houses. But I believe every woman has something in her hand to build the kingdom. <laughs> I, it may not be a million dollar check, but God has given you skills. God has given you a testimony to build the kingdom of God and to spread the good news about Jesus Christ. Some of us engage too many times in low level conversations. <laughs> Those low-level conversations mean us no good. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody he picked me up and he turned me around. And he placed my feet on solid ground. Somebody says, Reverend Nancy, how did you get where you are in your life and in your career and in your ministry? What I said was people prayed for me, and it wasn't easy. I crawled there, but after every crawl, even on my knees, God was with me. So I'm coming today to tell you, thou art with you. Wherever you go, whatever you do, What's ever going on in your house, what's going on in your marriage, your finances, your health, God is with you. And because you have breath in your body today, God ain't finished with you yet. We ought to stop putting a period where God is still writing our narrative. You don't know the things that God has in store for you. I've had conversations with God like, why I have to go through that? Why didn't you just tell me? Nancy, don't do that again. Like, why did I have to go through that? Why did I? Because I know that God takes his time to build character, to give us discernment, to give us wisdom. And that's what we need as we continue on in this life's journey. Surrender those things to God. I preached one time years ago, and we did a Bible study about us being a superwoman. I ain't doing that no more. Because <laughs> I ain't a superwoman, but God's a super God. God can carry what I cannot carry. God can do what we can not do. A place of transformation. Whew. That's all I got for you today. That's all I got. All to Jesus, I surrender. 
all to him I freely give. Yes. If you believe that this word was for you, and if you are in need of intercessory prayer, raise your hand or come to this altar. Because this may not be a river, but it could be a place of transformation. to the left, don't look to the right because I believe this is a sacred moment right now. I believe that God is talking to you right now. Hey! Hey! And it's okay to cry. Cries are cleansing. Tears are cleansing. place of transformation. This is a sacred time. God is doing something in this place today. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Sisters, you are beautiful. All to Jesus. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, this morning that you are letting the women know that we matter, that we are important. God, thank you. We thank you for the story of Lydia, who would gather with the Jewish women and begin to pray. But God, we thank you that the text tells us it was you that opened her heart to receive a word, a message of the good news about Jesus. God, I don't know what every woman stands in need of, but we are confident that you know. The Bible says, God, that you know what we're going to say even before we open up our mouths. God, we thank you. We thank you for the liquid prayers that fall down from our eyes, God. We thank you, God, this morning. There's no wall, no boundary, and no barrier that your spirit cannot cross. We thank you, God, that we are never alone. Even though when it feels like we are lonely, God, you are there. 
We thank you, God, that you have included us in the biblical narrative. We thank you, God, for every woman who has spoken and moved and acted to do your bidding from Genesis, God, to the book of Acts. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that whatever is going on in our lives and in our finances and in our health and in our homes and whatever concerns us, God, I hear you say, God, you got us. God, some of us, we said already, tries to manipulate the outcome. We try to hedge our bets. But on today, you're saying if we really want to be transformed, we are to meet you in prayer and in the word, God, so you can wash us and you can transform us. God, we thank you today. We thank you, God, because we recognize this morning that when the tears flow down from our eyes, they are cleansing, God. Thank you. Thank you for hearing our faintest cry. And we know, God, that you will answer by and by. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. God, we thank you the things that you have in store for the women who trust and believe you. Now, God, you do all things well, and you do all things but fail. It is in the name of your son, Jesus, the risen Christ the one that sits on the right side of the majesty, the one that says that they don't take my life, but I lay it down because I have power and authority to pick it back up. It is in the name of Jesus we say amen. As we prepare for to take our communion, that we are in the Lenten season. And this is the most sacred season in the life of the church. It leads us to Holy Week. These elements represent the blood, the body and the blood of Jesus. And Jesus says, whatever you do, don't forget this. To Jesus. What can wash our sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can transform our lives? It's nothing but the blood of Jesus to Jesus. Amen, amen. We are, thank God for the word today. Place of transformation. Are there any visitors in the house today? Are there any visitors here? Is this your first or second time? Please stand. And we're going to ask the disciples to please stand also, and we are going to sing the welcome song.
pastor, Dr. Anthony L. Bennett. We thank you for visiting with us today. Um, if you would like to learn more about joining the church, please go to our website, and there are also announcements out there. Oh, no, I'm not supposed to read that. <laughs> so go to our website, but we thank you for visiting us today. So some announcements. Uh, thank you for your tithes and offerings. The baskets are at the back of the door if you are not um, paying online. The youth ministry is having a fellowship with parents immediately following service today in the Bass Hall. Light refreshments will be served. Pastor's anniversary is April the 2nd with Pastor Anthony Moore from Carolina Baptist Church in Maryland. That's April the 2nd. And guess what, y'all? Y'all got to take out your calendars also and your phone. Mount Airy is having a good Friday worship service. <laughs> uh, April the 7th at 10 a.m. Good Friday worship at the Mount, April the 7th at 10 a.m. A complete announcements are available in the Narsex. We had a good time today in the name of the Lord, so let us stand to be dismissed. Powerful witness, powerful witness of a perfect God. Of a perfect God. Have a blessed week.